Welcome, everyone. What a treat to see everybody here. Um, thank you all for coming. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be part of this. But you know, I had just a few management people that I talked to all along. But you guys make it real. And thank you for being here. <laughs> so I'm going to um, talk to you about the 43 nutrients that you've been hearing about so long. Um, first, I'll tell you a little about my background and then talk to you about the 43 nutrients talk to you about trying to do it at home, and then a little bit about the science, and you'll understand that that's an important part of what I do, and, and certainly for the company. So forget all the real stuff. Really, I'm a wife, and I'm a mother, and I'm actually a grandmother, and I'm a grandmother again, and I'm about to be a grandmother of twins again, so uh, it's all very exciting. They just sent these up last week, so I said they've got to be a part of it. They're part of my family. But in the times when I wasn't doing all that kind of stuff, I was uh, doing some other things. I um, got my doctorate in nutrition, and I uh, was on the faculty at Harvard Medical School, where I did a lot of research. And some of you think of research as, well, they feed a few rats something with a vitamin and call it a day. I didn't do that stuff, and neither did my lab there. We were interested in real things of what happens to humans getting nutrients, and that was the whole bulk of my academic career. It resulted in publication of uh, lots of papers, 100 plus. I spoke all over the place around the world on nutrition, not only to my peers, defending my science, but also to the public. And I wrote these papers in uh, trying to feed cancer patients and taking care of burned children, which is what I did, and also uh, looking at the effect of fish oil on people with HIV infection. That was my doctoral dissertation. We wrote a lot of books in our lab together, too, to educate um, doctors and other nutritionists. I also had a business uh, profession. I, I founded a company where we developed foods for people with chronic conditions like diabetes. And then I worked in the dietary supplement field for many years, developing products for dietary supplement companies, retail and multi-level ones, and developed Tony Robbins' uh, whole line of products, Inner Balance. But I continued to publish. I was always curious about, are we doing the right thing with these supplements and foods? And I wrote papers about vitamin E and its benefit and um, fish oil in pregnancy, how much should a pregnant woman take. I also, those of you that have worked in the supplement field, probably recognize these books written by Phyllis Balch. Uh, um, the book on the, on the right sold 8 million copies. There's a lot of people that know about nutrition. Sadly, she died several years ago, and I was contacted by the publisher to step in her shoes and update both volumes, which I did, and these are on the market. So I know a lot about food, and I know a lot about supplements, and want to use them correctly. So lastly, I had a few uh, corporations that I worked with. Wild Oats was a uh, grocery store, so I worked with them. And then I worked with um, the California Raisin Board, a milk protein company, a company that makes flowers, uh, wheats, and other grains. And I'm on the Sam's Club Advisory Board. They have a wonderful magazine, which I'm going to push here. It's free online. And I really, I mean, I read every word, every issue. And the staff is doing a superb job. It's a great way to get educated. And then I do a little volunteer work. Um, I had lost so many friends now to cancer. And uh, I have a physician friend in Florida. And he and I developed this Cancer Nutrition Consortium. And we design foods now for people getting chemo and radiation therapy, a group that I can tell you had been neglected for a long time. So enough about me. Let me tell you about uh, Chip and me. I've known Chip for 20 years. We, we started off sort of doing the same things in Boston and um, became very good friends. So in April, he calls me down. Uh, I meet him in New Jersey. And he says, I got this thing. And I want you to tell me what you think of it. So, you know, he goes through, you know, sort of what you all heard here, and I'm there, mm, I don't know, you know, I, it's, it's new, I don't know if it's real, sounds okay, and, and I had David and Peter in the room, and they're staring at me saying, well, come on, tell me it's wonderful, and I'm there, I can't do that. So, um, <laughs> everything takes, it just takes me a long time. So, with my skepticism, I went through a series of thought in my mind, and said, first thing I said, Get over it, Chip. Just tell people to eat real foods. And as the biggest 
irony was that when I arrived, I didn't know what Chip was going to tell me. He was talking about the essential nutrients. A year before, I had written this book called Essential Foods. We had exactly the same theory, except in hindsight, I wasn't quite as smart as Chip. I did with my dietitian hat. I said, if you jokers would just eat what I tell you, you'd have all your essential nutrients and you'd live a long life. And that was the book I wrote, and you know, I had lots of published, I had lots of articles that I cited, and I was really full of myself thinking, well, this is the way to go. Well, maybe not. Then I said, well, Chippy, let's just make life easier for people. Take a vitamin pill. I've worked in the supplement industry. There's tons of options out there. Go and just take something and then leave, stop torturing people. Well, it turns out in reviewing the supplement industry, and as you know, I've worked there a long time and I'm not bad-mouthing them, but there are publications that, first of all, it's not as physiologic because you're popping a pill in and you're not eating anything. It, it has stomach and GI problems, which I heard every company I consulted for, people don't take them correctly. And some of the supplements don't have enough of something or too much of something, or they omit them all together. We don't do that. And Chip said for clearly he was not gonna do that. But it doesn't teach anybody how to eat. It's not pleasurable, you're popping a pill, you're not really covering a lot of ground. So then I said, well, all right, maybe I was wrong and maybe we need something new. But then I said, who doesn't get enough? Maybe Chip's making up a problem that doesn't exist. Well, it turns out 30 to 50% or 60% of the population doesn't get enough of all the vitamins and all the minerals. And that's a pretty big number. You know, I, I'm warming up to Chip now by this point and saying, hey, maybe he's right. Then I looked at these two in, next two interesting studies written by a friend of mine, Joanna Dwyer, who said, hey, get over it. People eat food, they take supplements, and then they eat fortified foods, like the, um, the cornflakes that I have up there. People, that's the real life that they do. So she and her co-researchers said, all right, let's add it all up together. We'll get a much better impression of what people eat. So you can see on both the vitamins and the vitamins are on top, minerals are on the bottom, Everybody should be at 100, all those nutrients. And even summing everything together, you don't get there. No one gets enough vitamins and minerals. These are adults, kids are the same problem. You know, and all these mothers think, you know, I'm gonna give little Billy the little vitamin. Well, it turns out the vitamin has like, the pediatric ones that I see have five or six things in. They, kids need 43 just like everybody else. It's not, can't make it up. So sadly, kids don't get it either. So. I said, okay, I'm really warming up to Chip now, and I'm saying, all right, there's a problem here. But then I said, well, maybe it doesn't have any consequence. Maybe this is all malarkey. Maybe there aren't 43 nutrients. Maybe you don't need them every day. Well, it turns out from the literature, and these are you know, from scientists published, not me talking, that I, that I read. First one was from a pediatric gastroenterologist in Chicago who talks about this hidden hunger. And he sees patients and he says, it's not like you're gonna have um, scurvy where you have uh, sores in your mouth and such. These are small symptoms, but he, can, he says that if children don't get all the nutrients they need, they're not gonna be growing to their full capacity, and even worse, they're gonna have varying degrees of neurocognitive deficits in English, they're not gonna be as smart as they could be without these nutrients. Um, adults, we got other problems. You go through a long life, you don't get these nutrients, and look what happens. You get age acceleration, and coupled with that, you're getting old, and you're getting a lot of chronic conditions along with it. Increased risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, which we got plenty of in our society. It can all be traced back to the lack of essential nutrients. Where are we? So I'm really warm enough to chip at this point. I said, God, you know, people can live longer, kids can be smarter, everybody can be happier and healthy. What's out there in the literature? Well, I have a couple of quotes that really stuck with me. And, and again, this isn't me making up anything. This is what learned scientists in the field say. First of all, they say, get over it. You can you know, tell people to eat a healthy diet. It is not happening. It's not going to happen. And you've got to do something else and people will not get all their essential nutrients unless you fortify the food. And that's what the genius of what Chip figured out ahead of all this stuff in the literature. Third thing was, talking to my peers, health professionals, get over it. You tried to tell people to eat well, they're not eating well, stop it. You have to 
think about other ways of feeding people with chronic conditions or just keeping those that you still have are healthy, keeping them healthy. And the last one was my favorite where one of the authors said, hey, but it's impossible. There's no way you can make a food that tastes good with all the essential nutrients in. They hadn't heard of us, whoever we're going to be. Uh, <laughs> but so stay tuned and uh, we will let them know. So the other thing that, that I was taken with once I you know, swallowed my pride and said, yep, Chip got it right, I got it wrong, is that it's not making foods just with essential nutrients. We have a delivery system for other foods, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And one of my things that I've written on a lot is protein quality. And it, it's just a joy for me to go in a supermarket and look for some organic raw nonsense and look at the proteins and see that they're of such poor quality. It really is a shame that anybody's buying them and anyone's eating them. Proteins are very elegant and we're designed in our DNA to only look for certain types of protein. And Chip and I have worked tirelessly to make sure that you're only getting the Cadillac of protein. So you may see our mix and you may say, boy, that's peculiar, what, did they, what were they thinking? We were thinking of getting the best in there and making life easy. There's an international standard to grade proteins. It goes from zero to 100. So we drove a steak in it. High quality ones are over 90, and that's where all our foods will be. We also have high density. So every bite you take, you're, you're obviously going to get nutrients. You're going to have lots of water. It's a big thing that you heard Chip uh, talking about. It makes you feel full. And you're lucky. You're, you're first in. You're the only ones are going to be able to be making all these statements about what you're selling. And it's really quite exciting. So I'm a believer. I can't help it. It took me a journey. It took me several months of looking at the medical literature and reading things. And just a couple of things that really uh, sealed the deal for me, if you will. This first thing is I went back to my roots and thought about essential nutrients in my life. And I treated 10,000 patients easy for all sorts of diseases and sadly never brought up new essential nutrients, but perhaps should have. And when I went back to my, my favorite textbook, and it's, it's like, I don't know, it's been on my shelf forever, Modern Nutrition, Health, and Disease, I opened the thing, and the very first chapter is called Essential Nutrients, and I'm there. Oh. You know, silly me, I should have started there in the beginning and it's not going through this journey of looking at things. So essential nutrients are absolutely real and without them you die and if you have them in low amounts you won't grow well as a child and you'll age faster and all this stuff that I told you before. It's all real when it's in my favorite textbook on nutrition. The other thing is the government has a series of books which are all in my office, there's about 12 of them. And each nutrient is in a bound together. And what the, what the um, uh, Institute of Medicine did, they assembled these panels of learned scholars. So if you're a chromium expert, you're locked in the room for four days, presenting your work, comparing it to others. And each chapter goes through sort of what the nutrient does and then talks about how much you need and how much you, shouldn't, how much you should take every day. And what we're doing is basing our stuff on the best science available. All his 43 are in these books. And again, another sanctioning point to say, we're not out in the weeds. You never have to squirm and talk about what you're talking about. We're, we're doing it by the rules and following the real deal. And the last point, though, that is personal to me, I spent a professional career mostly caring for patients that could not eat on their own volition. I was sort of the, you know, the, the queen they brought in at the end and said, you know, Grandma's going to have to be fed artificially. And sometimes we put a feeding tube in uh, grandma's abdomen, and, and sometimes we put a catheter in the neck of patients. And my role with my team was to create every single essential nutrient so that patient would get out of the hospital, convalesce, and go home. And that was my specialty. I wrote out of, you know, 50 papers on this stuff. And what's interesting now, I've sort of gone full circle in my life Coming, coming back with Chip now and the team, I know that he's got every essential nutrient for all of your customers, because I've done it firsthand where I had to take every single nutrient just like Chip did, put it in an intravenous solution or put it in a tube feeding formula. So I'm a believer. I hope you guys are believers. And then um, 
at the end, I still was a little, you know, squeamish and, and got, you know, support from uh, David and his group. And they said, well, you're so smart, Doc. Why don't you figure out what you got to eat and compare it to one of Chippy's meals? So what I did is I, you know, <laughs> went and tried to figure it out. So I think I'll take both of you. You come over. Yeah, you just walk around with the, you take, if you take that and you take this tray and we're just going to go around. So, it, you know, so I said, I can do this. I, I'm smart. So we're going we're gonna to have uh, the demonstration here. And the first big bowl here, you can go down each aisle and then come around here. We have a stir fry of chicken livers and broccoli. And then, and I'm looking for volunteers. I know you're all type A personalities. And surely someone is looking for 100% of their essential nutrients. The other, yeah, all right, you're up. You wait. <laughs> and the other tray is all the other carefully weighed out nutrients, peanuts, soybeans, uh, uh, walnuts, salt to get the iodine. So the, it wasn't so bad that the food isn't appetizing. It killed me. It took me eight hours to do the math, to find the essential nutrients, to make sure I could match one of Chip's meals. Then I went to the store for an hour and tried to fiddle out with that. I spent $26, came home, and just to prepare the meal that just has the 100 cent the nutrients, which you're going to eat later, thank you, um, I, I, it's still $7.50, uh, $7 and I wasn't even taking my time to prepare the thing. So I'm saying, I don't think you can do this at home. And if you do, it's a lot of work. You're not going to like it. And look at what you get. You get a regular food couple hundred, 300, 400 calories, 25 grams of high quality protein for sure. And it's not going to cost you that much. And you don't have to think two or three minutes and it's over. So it was really hard for me. So I stacked this deck. I took these high nutrient rich foods because I, don't, I, thought, I thought I was going to do it in five minutes. I thought I know stuff. I don't know anything. It's just too hard. So, you know, you mix a little liver and broccoli and then you look at the board and you say, what meal is that? And, and then what are you going to do? Yeah, there, it isn't a meal. And it's six ounces a wheat germ. And then I thought, am I going to bread the um, uh, liver? And then I went shopping yesterday, and, and the, uh, Virginia Castleman, our writer, is, it was with me. She goes, well, don't you have any oil or something to fry it in? I go, no, then that would be wrong. I couldn't, I, that would go out of my nutrient range here. And the, the problem is that in the elegance of chip doing it in a couple hundred calories, I was at a full day's calories and way too much protein. So even trying to get my best choice of best foods, I can't do it and I'm, I know nobody else can do it. So we left this and then the, the team, the marketing geniuses said, forget it, nobody's going to eat that. Go do real foods. And this is uh, Mr. Castleman who says, look, just pick a regular breakfast. I said, I don't know what a regular breakfast is. He says, all right, this is what I want. He says, I want. Um, a bagel and cream cheese, cornflakes and milk. Do you guys want to pass these around too then? Um, this tray, please, the milk and the cornflakes, the other, yeah, just walk around. And uh, cornflakes and milk and a banana. I said, yeah, okay, that will be all right. And I started doing the math again and counting up the nutrients and I said, there's no way, you're not even close. And he, so I called Peter and Peter goes, oh yeah, just go add a cheese omelet with broccoli. I go, oh, nutrients, yay, I can do that. So I did that, added that up, and I thought, well, this is, this is normal. Somebody could eat this for breakfast and, and it looks like real food and you all could get your arms around it. So turns out I'd, I still have several problems. It, it's way too many calories. It's like twice the amount of calories you need and 1.5 times too much protein at a single meal. And so you're fat, you got a lot of calories, but the worst part is with this, only half of the essential nutrient needs are met. So what it tells me is that we've created a nation of people eating foods that are devoid of essential nutrients and they're eating way too many of them. And I suspect they're eating too many of them, hoping they're gonna find one essential nutrient. And if they eat a typical breakfast like this, they're only gonna get half of them. And I got news for you, half doesn't work. These things are non-negotiable. They need to come in every single day. They need to be at the right amounts. And you can't do it eating the typical American diet 
and also the typical diet has way too many calories that you would need in order to get all the nutrients. So it's really not easy to do. And you may say, well, it's cheaper than, than the meals that we got. You, you know, you get what you pay for. And that's one of the problems here. Food is so cheap in this country, it's devoid of nutrients. And here's a great breakfast, it cost me two fifty to make it, not, not my labor, but just to, to make that meal. Yes, it's a little less, less than what you're selling, but who wants it? It is just going to make you fat and it doesn't have any nutrients. So it simply doesn't make any sense. Thank you, ladies, for doing that. So leaving that, I just want to say a few words in closing about uh, my passion for science. I spent a long time doing it. And one of the things that really attracted me to this company was their willingness to keep the science going. And we created a scientific advisory board of half a dozen people from all as aspects all over uh, nutrition and we're not strong arming them saying you you got to know essential nutrients we want to hear about nutritional science in general most of them have a lab of doing work and some of them are physicians and I, I'm so pleased that would you stand up Dr. Rodriguez one of our scientific board members came here today uh, Raymond Raymond Rodriguez, I'm so pleased he came. It's really special. And please go talk to him because he's a lot smarter than me. He's quite interested in the interface of genomics and in nutrition. And this is a burgeoning new field. I know zero. So I'm so happy he's part of our group. And lastly, we're paying for research studies. And we now have healthy foods. I can guarantee you that they're perfectly made, they got good essential nutrients, they got good protein, they're all ready to go, but maybe we can help people with chronic conditions. So we're now uh, running a study in Boston with a, a friend of mine, Susan Roberts, who's an expert on nutritional studies, satiety, obesity, diabetes, and the like. And she was enamored, she's really enamored with CHIP, but she was then also enamored with CHIP's food, and she said, what a novel way to feed my patients. She said, I've had no luck with anything else, and here's something I really want to study. And usually researchers don't talk like that, so we're looking forward to working with her. So in closing, I want to thank you all for uh, going on a journey with all of us and, and all of you to make Americans healthier. But now when I heard all the languages in the audience, we're going to make the world healthier. <laughs> And you guys are armed with it all. You got, nothing's working, so you don't have to worry about that. No, one, no one's meeting their essential needs, so you got something to sell straight away. There's um, risk if you don't eat enough of these essential nutrients and you don't want to scare potential customers, but hey, this stuff's real. You need them as adults, you need them as children. You can't do it at home, so if you run into somebody like me, a little dietitian saying she can do it at home, we, you can show her all this stuff and say, no, you can't. And lastly, you guys are on your own. No one's doing it, and no one's close. Thank you all very much. <laughs>